Painful swallowing. What is odynophagia and what should SLPs understand about it? If someone were to ask you to swallow a bunch of toothpicks or boiling water, you'd probably run for the hills. Unfortunately, for some people, swallowing their own saliva can feel just like that. Experiencing temporary or persistent painful swallowing can not only impact your quality of life, but it can have a negative effect on your health and nutrition. Today, I'm going to talk about odynophagia. Let's dive in. I'm Teresa Richard. I've been a medical speech pathologist for 15 years. I'm a board certified specialist in swallowing and swallowing disorders. I'm the founder and CEO of the MedSLP Collective and MedSLP Education. Odynophagia means painful swallowing. Have you ever had the experience of a sore throat while sick or having had reflux so bad that it causes you pain? Well, then you have experienced odynophagia. Whenever I've had students or clinical fellows under my supervision, one of the first things I drive home with them is that if a patient complains of painful swallowing, then it is a huge red flag. Painful swallowing should never be ignored. It can mean so many different things in our particular patient populations. From infections to trauma to cancer, a painful swallow can be nothing of major concern or it can be the first signal of a life-changing diagnosis. In many cases, it is important to push for the patient's team to provide an endoscopic visualization if the pain is in the throat. It is also important to remember that if the source of pain can't be located, it may be in a location we can't visualize unless an advanced practitioner looks visually at the esophagus. Pain is always our body's way of saying, hey, something is wrong here. The Mayo Clinic defines odynophagia as painful swallowing. Examples of etiologies that can cause painful swallowing are physical trauma, extreme temperatures, certain prescribed medications, drugs, tobacco, alcohol, ulcers, abscesses, upper respiratory tract infections, inflammation of the oropharynx, immune disorders, and cancer. So as you can see, there's a very wide range of severity. I'll be posting other videos just like this one that you won't want to miss. So make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell. Also, do you have any specific questions about adynophagia? Leave a comment below and tell me about it. We'll be sure to get your questions answered as soon as possible. Now, is odynophagia the same as dysphagia? We have all experienced having a sore throat from the flu or a strep bug or attempting to get down a bowl of soup or ice cream. No matter how bad we may want the food, the pain of swallowing prevents us from eating. The pain of swallowing may in turn cause difficulty with swallowing, which is technically what we know as dysphagia. However, odynophagia and dysphagia are not the same thing. Painful swallowing may cause dysphagia, but it is a symptom of something else. Dysphagia and odynophagia are close cousins, but they are definitely two separate things. Many head and neck cancer patients receiving chemotherapy and radiation retain their appetite, but experience painful swallowing that interferes with eating and puts them at risk for nutritional compromise. It's almost the chicken and the egg effect. Is the painful swallowing causing dysphagia or is the dysphagia causing painful swallowing? That's why it's imperative as SLPs that we put on our detective hat and be part of the interdisciplinary team that gets to the root of the issue. There are different treatment options available for odynophagia depending on the etiology of the pain. Many times, odynophagia has a relatively quick fix involving appropriate medications like antibiotics, antifungals, and numbing agents. A person with thrush might benefit from a magic mouthwash, which is a cocktail of medications meant to rid a patient of infections and ease discomfort. Other fixes may not be so simple and involve treating the underlying disorder causing the pain while attempting to alleviate symptoms such as dry mouth, oral and pharyngeal burning, and cracked blistered mucosa. For more life-threatening conditions like cancer, removal of the cancer followed by appropriate post-operative treatment may mean that the pain is going to be around for a little while. Long-term management strategies should be worked out with the patient's physician. I had a patient a few years back that was on a slew of antibiotics, including a course for aspiration pneumonia. A few days into her hospital stay, she also developed a fungal infection of the aerodigestive tract, referred to as thrush. This infection was suspected to be from the antibiotics she was currently taking. So why does thrush often occur in those receiving antibiotics? 
Well, antibiotics can alter the natural balance of the human biome, including the biome of the mouth and throat, a place where we are supposed to have naturally occurring bacteria. This patient was already being worked up for dysphagia from the aspiration pneumonia and now had odynophagia from having thrush. So it's important to be mindful of what may have been the underlying cause so that both can be treated appropriately. I've got a free gift for you over at metaslpcollective.com. You'll get instant access to our free MetaSLP Collective clipboard kit. We also have a robust and vibrant community of SLPs and mentors to help you out with your toughest clinical cases. Head over to metaslpcollective.com now to get your hands on this. The link will be in the description below.